All right, guys, wrapping up chapter two with uh, proving some geometric relationships. We're going to put to use the things that we've just learned the last couple sections, and we're going to see what uh, what happens here. We learned a couple things about some uh, words that we've learned in the past, and uh, first one is postulate two eight, the linear pair postulate. So you guys learned about linear pairs back in the first chapter. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So here is your conditional. If this, then this. All right. And here's a picture of it. One and two form a linear pair. So one and two are supplementary, and they add up to one eight. And vertical angles. Oh, man. Such an important postulate. Or I'm sorry. Such an important theorem. You are going to use this so, so, so very much this year. More than anything else that we're going to do. And um, let's see what we've got. Vertical angles are indeed congruent to each other. So one the same as three, two is the same as four, always and forever. Always and forever, each moment with you. All right, so let's put this stuff into use, my friends. Here's a picture. G use given information, and uh, we're gonna write all two column proofs here in, this, in our little world. Um, is it given paragraph proof? Yeah, so we're just turning these all straight up into two column proofs. Vertical angles congruent theorem. So, given 5 and 7 are vertical angles. Indeed, they sure are. Prove that 5 is congruent to 7. So now they got a little 6 in here to help us out. We need a little help from another angle in this particular uh, situation. So when you guys get good at this, they won't even give you that 6 right there. But for right now, they're trying to show you how you can uh, use another angle to help you out. So again, the given information, so we put that right there. Now the six is there to help us out. What do you guys know about six and seven? Well, I know that angle six plus angle seven equals 180. All right, why? Because they're a linear pair, LP. That's all you got to put. Linear pair postulate. My geometry teacher would have made you write the whole thing out. Linear pair postulate. He'd have been like, you got to put postulate 2.8. Linear pair postulate. If then then write the whole thing. For me, I'm easy like Sunday morning, baby. It's LP. Linear pair. The next step. Now, I want you to think about this. We're trying to get to 5 and 7. That's what we want our last step to be down there somewhere. So, right now... I got an equation with seven in it. I want to get an equation with five in it. I got it. Like you already invited seven to the party. Now you got to invite five to the party so that you can hook up five and seven. You want to introduce five to seven. So right now you got six and seven being 180. Six is playing matchmaker here. Well, we know that six and seven were a linear pair. We also know that it's five and six, six and five. Angle six plus angle five. That's also equal 180. Because they're a linear pair. So now, here's where you're going to bring them together. So 6 is playing matchmaker. 6 and 7 is 180. 6 and 5 are 180. Well, if they both equal 180, then they got to equal each other. So this expression has to equal this expression. So angle 6 plus angle 7 equals angle 6 plus angle 5. And there's your transitive property. You got three different elements. Element one, element two, element three. Transitive is like if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Same thing's happening here. If this equals 180 and 180 equals this, then these two things equal each other. So the transitive. Property of equality. Now, once we have that, now you got five and seven in the same the equation so that's good so now once you hooked them up you got to get out of the way so six needs to leave now leave five and seven alone so now you got angle seven equals angle five what'd you do to both sides you subtracted so there is why the vertical angles are congruent that's a theorem so theorems you can prove so we just proved the vertical angle congruent theorem. How sweet is that? That's why you can use it now from now on. All right. Now that we know it, we can use it. 
you can't use the theorem to prove itself. Like on this last one, you couldn't be like, prove five is the same six because the vertical. No, 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 you're trying to show that. So you can use anything else you want to show it. And we use linear pair postulate. Now that we know it, we can use it. So let's see what we got here. First step, always given. So in this little crossroads here, they're telling us that one's the same as four. So they're telling us that these two are the same. And they're saying, if that's the case, then two should be the same as three. Can we show that? All right. And here's how you want to do it. Well, how do you know that four is the same as two, the second step? How do you know that four is the same as two? Well, we just learned it. Vertical angles. How do you know that one is the same as two? Well, check it out. If one is four and four is two, then one is two. That is the, that's a straight up transitive property if I ever saw it. One is four and four is two, so one is two. So you used these two equations to make your own new one. All right, now you got one equals three, and the next step, they're across from each other, so there's another vertical angle situation. And then you got the same thing. One is two and one is three, so two is three from the transitive property. So there's an example of proving a theorem and then using it in the next proof. Once you proved it like we did, now we can start using vertical angles are congruent, vertical angles are congruent. We were allowed to use it here because that wasn't what we were trying to prove. We were trying to prove two is the same as three. As opposed to this one where we were trying to show the vertical angles were congruent. All right, using angle relationships. Let's talk, the rest of this section is just using uh, the vertical angles and the linear pair and how you can use them to solve. So this one's pretty simple. You can always assume vertical angles. You got two straight lines happening here. There's an intersection of P. So we can always take the two expressions and set them equal to each other. All right, subtract one on both sides, 147, divide by three. So X goes into that, uh, what's that, 49 times. All right, so 49 times three is 147, so X, 49. All right, now we're getting some good ones here. I'm gonna work this one with you, monitoring progress, and then we'll talk about B and C are a little bit weird. So in this one, first off, let's be good geometry students here now as we progress at the end of the second chapter. We're looking at this and we're like, all right, I got different, I got some choices here. Of course, you just saw the vertical cross from each other. So you're always going to look for that first. That's the easiest one. And then in this case, we have the same variables happening across from each other. So we're just going to set it up. It won't always be the case. Sometimes your X's will be next to each other. There and there, there and there. So then in that case, you would set them equal to 180. But in this case, we got 8X plus 7 would be equal to 9x minus 4. So solve that, subtract 8x is add 4, so 11 is x. And then I gotta do the same thing with the y's across from each other now, so 5y has to equal 7y minus 34. Subtract 7y's, I got negative 2y's equals negative 34, so y is 17. All right, now down here, it gets a little dicey, okay? The vertical, when you look across from each other, they have X's and Y's in them. So look around. We look side by side, because I can set these equal to 180, but they got X's and Y's in them. I can set these two equal to 180, but they have X's and Y's. So everywhere you look has X's and Y's. That's, no, that's not good, because that means we got to do a little bit more work. And let's do it. So, two equations, two variables. I'll try to be as neat as I can with this pen. So, 2x, and I'm going to use blue so it shows up a little bit better. So, 2x is going to equal y minus x. And then I'm going to go this way. 2x plus y plus x 
equals let me just move this equals 180 all right why not to do that again I need I had two variables anyway I looked man I tried to go vertical there was X's and Y's side by side had everything had X's and Y's so when that's the case we're gonna have to go with the substitution method all right so now I look what uh, which of these would be easiest to get up by itself. And I try to isolate one of these variables. This has a two in front of it. Oh, okay, Y looks pretty easy to get by itself. If I just add X to both sides, then I know that three, I know that three X equals Y. So now I have Y by itself. So now I can plug it in over here where I have this y. So 2x plus 3x plus x is 180. All right. 2, 3, 6x's is 180. So x is 30. And of course, anytime you got the two equations, two variables, you got to plug it back in to get y. So pick either equation. I'll just put 30 in for x here. Let's see, right here. So then 3 times 30, y is 90. So I got a 30 and a 90. All right, try C. So I'll pause the video and try C on your own and see what you guys come up with. All right, welcome back. Let's see how we did. All right, so again, I look across from each other. I got problems next to each other. Oh, wait, this is easy. This is easier. I can look across from each other, and all I have is Ys. Woo, that's cool. I don't got to do the two equation, two variable thing. I can just say 5Y plus 7Y minus 48 equals 180, since they're a linear pair. How cool is that? So you want to always look for the path of least resistance. 12 Y's equals 228. So divide both sides by 12. Y is going to equal 1. And then 12. All right, so we've got 1, then 108, 19. So y is 19. Now we've got to plug it back in so that we can uh, solve it for x. Let me get a little room here. So if I plug, if I take 5 times 19, so that's what, 95. So then 95 equals 8 x plus 7 so subtract so I'd have 88 equals 8x and x is 11 so 19 and 11 so there's good examples here guys sometimes the cross from you is going to work sometimes you got to play the two equation thing and sometimes you got to just look around so you can get all the same variable with a linear pair problem all right, so that's 2-6, a lot of algebra.